bless you. Welcome to the Encounter Worship Experience here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We hope that you enjoy this message, that it touches your spirit, begins a radical transformation and a life change in your life. We're getting ready to go to a powerful message from Bishop David Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 3. As we consider the theme that we've been operating under, um, the series concerns the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. The series is entitled, The Unlimited You. God taking the limits off of us because of our increasing cooperative relationship with the Holy Ghost. Most Christians operate under the level of permission and provision because of a partial and incomplete or fragmented understanding of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. But we're going to uh, engage your mind and your spirit in this part of your development as a strong breakthrough kind of Christian. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of you are going to come out of this series with a overwhelming sense of peace. Amen. Uh, nothing's going to ruffle you after this. You just, you're just going to be, people are going to think you're not concerned. No, you're just convinced. God's going to work that thing out. That the Holy Spirit's going to move. So it's our job now to, now that we've gone through the discovery phase, we're going through the developing that relationship. Amen? All right. Ephesians chapter 3. Let me know when you get there. And we're going to take our time during this piece too. So um, I need your thinking caps on. A pen that writes. Because you know every time you try to use them, they don't write then. You know. They got to make a pen that has a sign on the side of it, out of ink. <laughs> Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, are you there? Yes. All right. Verse 15 says, Of whom the whole family in heaven and in earth is named. Talking about us. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Hallelujah. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. And here's our focus. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. Tell your neighbor, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That worketh in us. Watch, it, watch this last one. Unto him be glory in the church. Talking about this is what church folk Amen. are supposed to experience. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Somebody shout beyond all expectations. I've come to understand at this juncture in life that there are lines or barriers that you and I uh, create within ourselves. And these barriers, these lines are drawn by our particularly unique experiences. In other words, there are lines within us that we have that we habitually have not crossed for years, lines that God did not draw, nor did the devil draw them, but we allowed other people to do so. Sometimes our own experiences have drawn these barriers, created these barriers to ourself within ourselves. Yes, sir. We get in the same emotional situations and there's some blockage there. Yes, 
We get in good situations, but there's some blockage there. What kind of blockage? We just don't believe that good things can happen to us. Now, we don't say this out loud, but we behave in a way. Because many times God will do some great work in us and we'll do something to sabotage the very thing God has given us. It's like coming out of a slew of bad relationships, getting a good one, and you just don't know how to act. Ain't nobody talking to me. So we can feel perpetually uninvited to things, perpetually uninvited to a better life, perpetually uninvited to good friends, perpetually left out. And it's no voice coming outside of us, it's voices that are inside of us that'll tell us we are uninvited. Lines that failure has drawn. Lines that family has set. You know those lines, none of us ever go to college. None of us ever have anything but manual jobs. Lines that family has set. Unhappy households draw lines. So when you get your own household, you're not content till your household is sad. Let me talk to real people. So you had a slew of bad relationships, men or women. You get in a relationship with somebody that's good, that cares, and you think cares control. So the line is, we don't know how to be cared for. The other line is, we get into situations after a series of negative situations, and we don't know how to let good things happen. So when God is trying to bless us, we draw a line. Some of us have let friends set barriers for us. They ain't nothing, so they don't want you to meet somebody that's something. And because we are so rejection sensitive, we'll stay with stupid people rather than mosey on to some good people. Come on, talk to me now. So we have these hurdles that are in the way that failure has put in place. And after you've lived a while, these, these barriers seem like they're immovable. Seems like they won't go anywhere. And then we make up the mind, never vocally, never loudly. We're just going to have to live with it. But then you know how Christians are. We have to spiritualize everything. We, we, we say maybe this is a cross that God wants me <laughs> to bear. I've got good news for you. In Ephesians, God has invited you to overcome these internal barriers. The ones in our minds, the ones in our hearts, the ones in our abilities. I know you know someone that can do some things, but they don't think they can. I know you know some people that are brilliant, but they don't think they are. Let me talk to you about brilliance. Intellect is a great thing. But intellect and brilliance are two different things. The thing that separates intellect and brilliance is imagination. If you're smart but you don't have any imagination, you'll just stay smart. But if you have imagination, for us, if you have revelation, that connects you with brilliance. Yeah. And once you get saved, huh, here it comes, God has created you to become brilliant. Don't compare yourself in the ability God has given you, created you to function in. The Holy Ghost will give you revelation that will make you brilliant in the thing you do. Am I making sense to anybody? Yes. Like, watch how this works. So, so, so we've got these internal lines based on what somebody said to us, did to us, situations we were in that often prevent us from 
moving very elegantly into the greater things that God has created us to experience. Do I have your attention yet? All right, watch how this works. Tell your neighbor, I've got good news for you. Look at somebody and say, God, God has, invited you has invited you to overcome, overcome all, all these, internal these internal barriers in your mind, in your, mind your emotion, your emotion and, your and your ability. God has invited you to a kingdom lifestyle. Hallelujah. He has invited you to a kingdom lifestyle. A life that exceeds, watch this now, all of the testimonies of our past experience. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I can testify me. The only voice in my life that's stronger at times than the voice of God is the voice of what I've been through. Can I talk to some real people? My experiences are relentless, reinforcing what I'm not capable of. Some of us have a nobody loves me line drawn. Some of us have a nothing good ever happens to me. Line drawn. Some of us, nobody will ever want me. Have, go get the line drawn. So every situation we get into this new, the folk run into our line. Because we don't move past the line we've drawn. They pursue us and run into the line we've drawn. Am I making sense to you? So we have this situation that we're in where, 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 where God comes along and says, look, I've got something to beyond your expectations. I've got a life for you that is clearly beyond the expectations that your history has convinced you belong to you. I've got... I've got I've got, I've got something for you. Yeah. Most Christians think Ephesians chapter 2, when that God is able to do exceeding, but they think that's a limitation. No, it's an invitation. Come on. That God wants all his people to live in this dimension of faith and the spirit. Yeah. But God also knows I've got to overcome what you haven't done. Yeah. What you failed at must be overcome. Am I still making sense? All right, watch how we go then. So God has invited you to a style of life, a kingdom life, that exceeds all of our past experiences. It's time you met the you that God has created. It's time you met the you God has created. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. You need to hear me. There's a stranger up in here that God wants you to meet. <laughs> you spend all your life chasing something and didn't realize you were chasing the one that God created you to be. There's somebody in your body that's been waiting for you to find them. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So it's time you met the unlimited you. So you got to understand, I'm not talking about being religious because religion is often different than salvation. 
Now, all of you, they've been looking for something to criticize called religion. You don't know what you're talking about. Because the Bible makes a distinction between good and bad religion. True religion and false religion. So religion in itself is not bad. The type of religion you choose can be positive or negative. The Bible says true religion is evidenced by people taking care of the poor. True religion helps people. True religion is out for more than yourself. True religion causes you to be a blessing, Uh not just receive one. Somebody say real religion. Religion, Religion, as we probably know it, is a repeated practice of a thing. Some of you make your bed religiously. Some of you don't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you do it religiously uh-huh. every day. <laughs> Salvation is a life that leaps into the river of God's power and then flows in his will and starts to experience the reality of his presence. The easy way to do this thing is religion. But when you understand that God wants a relationship with you, believe God wants to live with you and in you. That he wants to work with you and work in you. There's a space, there's a dimension of belief that is beyond all of our imagination. Freed from limitations of the past. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Seating abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the working of his power. And that Holy Ghost, if we're saved, is in each of us. So those negative chapters of our lives that put us in emotional limits, that stop you ever from expecting something good to happen, you're not surprised when things fail, you're surprised when they work out. I'm only talking to real people. Tell somebody it's time to let go of those limits. So God, by the Holy Ghost, has to do an internal and an external work. Internal change the way we see ourselves. External change the way we see the world around us. This is very important. The Holy Ghost doesn't do half a work. What's going on in us and what's going on out of us, around us, has to be transformed. God has to do an internal work and an external work for this to happen. He's got to change how you see yourself. Now, you spent years painting that portrait. God does not throw the painting out. He paints over the history and then starts all over again. He doesn't want to throw it out because that's your testimony. That's your deliverance. That's where you've been, not where you are. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And he's got to do this internally till you're not controlled by your historic portraits. wants you to change. He wants to change how you see yourself. Change how you think about yourself. Anytime you tell yourself, I'm all right, something's wrong. We tell ourselves, I'm all right, so we can keep carrying the thing. I'm all right is not us being delivered. I'm all right is I'm accepting it. But I'm here to tell you this afternoon 
God's going to blow up your expectation. Yeah. God Almighty, he's going to blow up your expectation. You, I know what your pastor said to you every day. I know some of you came in here with guilt and shame. But you're going to leave your guilt and your shame on this altar today. You don't have to say anything because you don't want people to know you got it. But I know you have it. All of us have done stuff we're guilty of. And some of our guilt has labeled us, and that's called shame. Time to leave your shame on the altar. Time to leave the labels that have been created for you and the ones you created for yourself on God's altar. Doesn't matter how trifling we've been. I got good news for the real trifling people. I ain't got to go ask you to raise your hand. Got good news for the real trifling people. You need to get excited because as trifling as you've been, that's how great a work God has to do. God's going to do something so great in your life, he's going to distance you from your shame until you no longer identify yourself by your shame. Change how you see yourself. We're going to shift past the limits that words and life have produced. All right, for just a minute or two, because we've got to close out, let's go to Ephesians chapter 2. I want to show you a few things. Let me know when you get there. <laughs> Some of y'all still looking? You only got to go over like one. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Are we there yet? Yes. All right, go down to verse 10. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to walk through this very quickly, and this will set the foundation for our discussion next week. Amen? Amen. All right. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Are you there? Watch what it says there. For we are his workmanship. You want to take note of the word workmanship. Okay? We are his finished work. We are his story. We are his sonnet, his poem. Yes, yes. That he has finished writing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We, 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 uh, I get excited about that. You, you, you didn't get excited yet, but you're about to. What? It doesn't mean that God's not finished because he's finished. Yes, sir. Let me help you understand this. So Jesus is on the cross, and it looks like he's at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Then he says something crazy. On the cross, nailed to the cross, dying on the cross, he says, it's finished. Yes, sir. How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> the fact that he declares it's finished means that he was in charge of the whole process. Yes. 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 The soldiers didn't say he was finished. That's good, that's good. So, you're his workmanship, yes. which means he finished writing the story. Yes. He's finished, but you're not. You got to live out the rest of his story. You are his workmanship. Beautiful, ain't it? What's this thing now? He says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So he's created us that good things should happen for us and about others. So he's created you to have a positive impact. Amen. So for those of you who are a plague in your own family, 
Don't y'all make me come out here. You know you've been a problem in your own family for a long time. You know everybody's, oh, when you walk in the house. God's not finished with you yet if you'll let him do some work. Look what it says now. Unto good works which God hath before ordained. Before ordained means set in place before you were born. He ordained it. He fixed it. He set it. So watch how it says, you're his workmanship. In his mind, he sees the end of what you're going to be. In your mind, you need to know your work in progress. Somebody say progress. You can't be progressive and always taking 10 steps back. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Watch how this works now. He's, he's ordained you before that we should walk. In them. You see that? You see it? All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Y'all got another two minutes? All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see now. Let's go a little further. Now, for time's sake, let's drop down to verse 18. So we're his workmanship, right? All right, we get down to verse 18. Watch what it says. For through him, talking about Jesus, we both have access. By one spirit, yes. unto who? Father. So the Holy Ghost gives me access yes. Yes. to the Father. Yes. Hmm. My, my. So, 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 so Moses is watching Israel go over to the promised land. Moses lost his temper, did something God told him to do, and he couldn't go in with the rest of the folk. My, my. So God sends four angels down to the, down to the gate. Say, I need you all to lock the gate. Before Moses starts praying. Because if the gate ain't locked, when Moses opens his mouth, I'm going to have to respond to what he's saying. Y'all didn't hear what I said to you. Thank God. Wow. <laughs> Somebody say access. God Almighty. For through him, you see it? Now therefore, you're no more strangers. You're not foreigners. But now we're fellow citizens. You're sitting next to a fellow citizen of the kingdom of God. It says, with the saints and of the household of God. And because you're part of the household, we are built upon a foundation of the apostles. Not that the apostles are the foundation, but their work was the foundation. Okay. So I don't want you getting upset because, but look, body Christ goes through trends. If I see another individual calling themselves an apostle, Everybody apostle now. <laughs> Repeat after me. Function, Function. attracts title. Attracts title. All right, so watch this. So on your job, you don't get promoted unless you've been working like you can do the promotion. Because function attracts title. Am I making sense to anybody? Yes. Okay. So, so now the apostles, watch this, the foundational work that's being talked about now has been completed. Because the Bible says no individual can come along and build a foundation under, over another person's foundation. Amen. So you get in your house built and, and they didn't put the foundation in, they put the foundation in, trying to be correct grammar here today. They put the foundation in and then somebody arbitrarily rides down the street and says, I think they need another foundation. 
and then you drive up at the same time. What you doing? I'm putting another foundation. Can't you see the foundation has already been laid? Yeah. Yeah. Foundations are put in place so they can support the work. Yeah. Am I making sense to you? So you don't argue with folk who want to call themselves what they do. But if there's no function, there's no real title. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. Right, watch how it works now. Y'all learning something? Yes. All right, watch this now. Verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So Jesus, watch this, why do they call him the chief cornerstone? Because the Bible calls you and me lively stones. So, so we don't get mixed up. They call Jesus the chief stone, yes. the most important stone, yes. the one that can handle the weight yes. that the rest of the stones can handle by themselves. Yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so the reason you ain't crumbled yet is because you're connected to the chief. Yes. Hey, God, somebody ought to give him praise. You felt like you were going down, but you were too connected. You almost lost your mind. Almost, almost, almost. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Twenty-one in whom all the building, all the building, fitly framed together. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, I'm not a butterfly. Just flitting around from every place, just lighting on everything. Yeah. Ain't no butterfly. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody else, tell them, I'm not a bullfrog. I'm not a bullfrog. Bullfrogs are content to sit till you touch them. Yeah. Then they leap off somewhere else to sit. Somebody say, I'm a brick. Not just gathered together, but assembled, yeah. connected with one another, yeah. making something strong, yeah. making something pretty, yeah. making something powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. 2021, 20, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows together into a holy temple yes. of the Lord yes. in whom mm. you also you and I yes. are being builded together yes. for a habitation huh? of God through the spirit yes. so God has decided now that you're saved to move in yes. he decided to move into your life he decided to put what's in it, what should have been in it, a whole line. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. I got to stop, y'all. We out of time. Did you get it? Yeah. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. We'll pick it up right there next week, all right? We hope you enjoyed that message from Bishop David G. Evans here at Bethany Church, the Transformation Church of New Jersey. We believe that it was thought provoking, but also something that could penetrate your heart and your mind and cause a radical transformation. Please do us a favor before you go and like, share and subscribe uh, on all of our platforms. David G. Evans one as well as BBC of NJ on YouTube, as well as on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, you want to be engaged with the content that God is using this ministry to produce. And as you feel led to, as in the sermon, you can also sow into this. We believe in sowing into the message, into what God has spoken into us, because we believe that that seed confirms that. And we trust and believe that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. The information is on the screen. There's also a link in the comment section. Uh, and you can sow into your future with a heart of worship and a heart of praise. Again, we're so glad you joined us today for another wonderful message here at Bethany Church of Transformation Church of New Jersey.
God bless you, and we'll see you next time.